Andy Parole for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And as everybody can see, as much as I'm delighted to be joined by him, he seems to be as delighted to be joined by me as he's got a big yawn going. The white rhino Dave Allen joins me over Zoom. Dave, first and foremost, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, mate. Early morning this morning. You know, I have to get up, like I just told you, I want to talk sport at half eight. I forgot all about it. Went to the toilet, quarter past eight, come back out of the text saying, what are you doing, Dave? You're on in 10 minutes. And uh, did that, and then now I'm talking to you. I'm not in bed. I'm on, I'm on my makeshift sofa in the living room. I did, uh, yeah, I did say to you just um, off camera, you looked like you'd just woken up and you were just lying there. But obviously, good to know about you up and about. How's life at the minute for yourself, Dave? Well, obviously, lockdown started. I went to my sister's. I was there for about seven weeks. I lost two stone. Just getting fit. I learned how to cook. Yeah, I can make an omelette now. Um, rice pudding I can do as well. I've realised now, I've realised if I'm doing a frying pan and a pan, I can use a pan as well now. Not mastered cleaning yet. But, um, but yeah, so but now I've come back home, isolated down there, Danny done the same. We're working on site. Um, I I just fill, I just fill buckets of stuff. Um, I'm not allowed to, I do the barrow now and again. I've done it a few times. Not really trusted with the barrow. I just, I just, Bring the buckets over. So, uh, so yeah, me and Danny are doing that now. So, we're just doing that and then trying to fit a session a day when we do that. And obviously, when we're not there, we just try and fit two sessions in. Now, we'll come on to obviously your life working on a building site in a, in a little while. But whilst we're on lockdown and that, I know you're one of the most fidgety and people that I know. You know, you can't sit still. You hate you hate being stuck in one place. So how has this been for you being told you have to stay at home? Well, yeah, after the first seven, well, I was there for seven weeks with my sisters, obviously, and my sisters' house was a bit nice to them, so it was good for a bit, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, for like, for two or three weeks, it was just like, it was just normal. I'm, I'm not one for my, I don't go out anyway, really, you know what I mean? So it wasn't too bad. And then I got the text about doing, doing some work, um, no, it's not on a building site, like it's the private jobs. So I got the call about that. So I just know I had another four weeks left, you know what I mean? So I got training. I was training twice a day. My meals are at certain times because I'm a weirdo. Me, like, if I meet, if I write down a meal at 8 55, might be at 8 50, and I'm spraying pan with coconut oil at 8 55 on the dot, you know what I mean? Because that's just how I am. So I, I would write down the night before what I was doing the next day. And if I, you know, like when you go for a run, and if you don't reach the lamppost before the car behind you, like fifty yards behind you, you're gonna get you're gonna get a serious disease or something bad's gonna happen to your mum. You know, you know, you know what I was talking about, don't you? If you don't like do certain things before, yeah. if you don't count the right amount, if you don't count how many cars have gone past in the last ten seconds, you're gonna get fucked up. So I'm like that with my food. So I was passing time and time every day really fast because I had a routine. And I had to stick to it. So. I was doing that, and I knew that I was coming back home, and I, and I was going to crack on with, you know, bucket filling. You know, obviously working bucket filling, <laughs> not your kind. And um, <laughs> so yeah, so it's gone all right for me. I just, I want. To, I think a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, like and Rob, and Rob said that, well, like I, they were worrying about me, like you know, how was he going to get on because they don't know what I'm like. But I just thought, I spoke to the boxing board a few months ago, and I tried to get my license back. And they were like, you need to be a role model, Dave. I think you'd be surprised how many people look up to you and you'd be surprised how many people take what you say and take that on board. So be a little bit more positive. Stop the foolishness and uh, and you'll surprise yourself. So I'm just, just took that on board and that's what I've been doing. Obviously, I know in the past you've spoken about the, you know, your mental health and some of your, your, your tougher and your darker times that you've had to overcome. Yeah. What has it been like? Have you felt any problems being stuck inside whilst everything's been the way that it has? No, I've been all right because I think during this time as well, you know, you do a bit of reflecting, don't you? I've done a lot of reflecting. Um, and, you know, like, oh, oh, a lot of my problems, like, I'm not, I'm, I've got a few problems, obviously, anyway. But 95% of my issues that I have and problems and stuff that causes me to feel a bit irritated and then that comes snowball. You know, the self-inflicted. I'm a very self-destructive person. I do a lot of stuff where I bring a lot of my own problems on myself. So I've realised that as well. And 
realise a lot of things. I just, I'm, you know, I'm 28 years old now. Like, I'm an actual man now, aren't I? You know, when you're like 23, 24, you just, you're still like, oh, I'm only a kid. I've got years to grow. But now, like, I'm a man, you know. So I feel good, like, I'm just accepting accepting things a bit better. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just accepting that certain things in life, when they don't go right, more often than not, it's just my fault, you know? So accepting blame for certain things. When things don't go my way, it's like, well, that's my fault. And even if it's not my fault, it's like, well, what am I going to do about it? So I'm not crying about it. So, and, and I spent a lot of time with family as well. So I'm on Twitter all the time, putting my opinion in about shit. No one needs to know my opinion on some stuff. But who cares what I think about certain things? And I'll be on Twitter and I just feel a lot better. I've spent time with family and, you know, it, and it's good because when you're at home all the time, surrounded by people and, you know, I think I just got, I think I just got a bit carried away of myself, to be honest. I think, um, tiny bit, I don't think I've changed. I just, just got a little bit carried away of myself. So I think I'm back on, I'm back on a nice even keel now. Good to hear, mate. Um, Obviously, let's move on to our boxing talk then. Um, the first thing being, you may not have had any fight news before this, but you was um, you made an announcement during lockdown that like you joined up with Jamie Moore. Um, that actually yeah. happened on April Fool's Day when, when you announced it. So at first, I was a little sceptical, thinking you was trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. But I've spoken to Jamie, he's obviously confirmed it all. Yeah. Talk to you about that, talk about the decision to team up with Jamie and what is a, a very stacked team. Well, I'm a Jamie Moore fan, you know, when he was a boxer. You know, I wasn't really watching boxing, but I watched the Macklin fight, the Ryan Rhodes fight. Good fighter, really good fighter, to be honest. Better than good, really good. Um, good gym full of fighters. At this point in my career, I've been boxing for 12 years now. Like, I can box, I know how to box. I know how to, I know how to, do, I know how to do a lot of it, you know what I mean? I'm not saying I do it to the highest level, but I do it, I can do it. I do it at my level, I do it competently. But with James, it's just like more, more like when I had Darren, like Darren in terms of boxing, in terms of my boxing, did Darren, what, did Darren add much in terms of my ability and whatever else? Probably not. You know, when you've been boxing for 12 years and I've had some of the greatest trainers, I spar all the best fighters, it's not like someone's not going to come along now and say, look, this is a shot you've never seen before or this is something you've never done before. Like, but like Darren, that, what Darren gave me was like a new lease of life. He gave me a new a new confidence, a newfound belief in myself and a newfound push in the gym. I think Jamie will do the same. I don't think Jamie's going to come and say, look, this, throw this, throw a job like I tell you, you're going to get 37% extra power. You know what I mean? But I, it's Jamie Moore who I respect massively. So I'm going to up my game in the gym. I'm going to, I'm going to eat better. I want to, I want to, I want to impress him. You know what I mean? So that's what it is. That's what it is more than anything else, you know? Whatever training, when you've been in boxing for over 10 years, it's very difficult to be shown something because A, you know, you should know the basics and B, you're setting your ways a lot. Like, I find it very difficult to change things now because, I'm, because I've, I've been doing it for so long. Like, it's hard, a habit's very hard to get out of my one they've been for 10 plus years. So, I'm not going to Jamie necessarily for him to change me as a boxer. Like, you're not going to see a massive overhaul in what I do, but I think you'll just see a fit in me, you'll see a fresh in me. Uh, and that can only that can only be a plus. So that's why I'm there because I respect him, I like him, and I think and I think he'll add that he'll add a little bit of something to my game in terms of you'll see a little bit of extra hunger, a little bit of fire in me because I want to impress him. Jeremy told me that you'd wanted to ask him about trying to do at least a session together, if not joining up permanently uh, for a little while. Why, why yeah. did you put it off? Why did you not go to him back when you originally had the idea of teaming up with Jamie? Well, I was with Mick Marsden for a long time, like on and off for about four years. Um, and I, I, Jamie was always one that I wanted to train with, you know, because, like I said, I respect him. And I, like with Darren, when I trained with Darren, I put so the brown fight, I trained so hard. Because I wanted to impress Darren, my mate, who was a world champion. I wanted him to say I was a good fighter. And I wanted him to know that I was putting effort in. I know I wanted to know that I appreciated his time. So, basically, I was with Mick for a long time. And I feel like I stagnated a lot. Me and Mick were really close. Well, we are close, you know what I mean? Me and Mick are, like, really close, as close as you can get. So, training was stagnating. I wasn't really putting the effort in. Some days I wouldn't turn up. I would take the piss, really, you know what I mean? So, but at the same time, my loyalty to him, I didn't want to leave. I even went to Adam Boo, and Adam Boo was willing to train me. 
And I said, I'm sorry, Adam, but I can't because my loyalty lives in Mick and I wanted to see it through to the end of him. Only when I was training for the brown fight, my head completely fell off and I didn't train for a week and I was and I was feet and I was in a really bad place. That only then did I ring Darren and say, Darren, can I come down to see you and do a bit of training while I'm down? So I've got the brown fight. I said, Yeah. And it clicked and I stayed there, you know what I mean? So I had the Adam Booth, the Adam Booth move was there and I've turned that down, which in hindsight, you know, was foolish, but I had that loyalty and I and I didn't want to uh, and I didn't want to break that. So um so yeah, but I did want to work with Jim for a long time because I'm a fan. And and really I just need someone to to, to bring out to bring out just to I do work out but I need someone to bring that out of me like Darren did and I think Jamie will do the similar thing Usually when a fighter moves to a new trainer they'll go around to different gyms and they'll have like a trial period for a week or so having yeah. competitions seeing how they get on not just with the trainer but with everybody else in that stable I know you'll know some of the lads well Cole Frampton being one of those but yeah it, why, why did you not decide just to wait until you could have some type of a trial period? I don't think I need one. I don't think so because for me, like, the, I don't think there's any such thing as a super trainer. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just go into a gym and someone, you can't magically make someone a great fighter, you know? Like, I could train Tyson Fury. I could train Billy Joe Saunders. I could train... You know, you Callum Smith, these elite fighters, you get anybody. I mean, Alan could train them and they'd still be amazing because they come up through the amateurs, they come through the GB setup, or they come through this and that, and they're naturally just really good fighters. So I don't believe in like just a great training. Someone, you can't, someone can't just take someone on the pads and make them a good fighter. So it comes down to things other than like, I don't look at, when I look at a trainer, I don't look at his pad work and say, his pad work's great. Or I don't look at him and say this. What I do is, like, I looked at Jamie Moore in the Tommy Coyle fight and the Algeria fight, and he pulled them out after seven rounds. And he said, that's enough, because he knew he couldn't win. And a lot of trains would have kept him in there, so keep trying, but he said, no, you're done. And that was that was another big moment where I said I wanted to be trained by him. And I was in New York, and I watched that fight. Because that man, that man, obviously, he's got his fight. But as soon as I said, ah, oh, and he'd do the same for me. So that, that was a big reason why. I respect Jamie. I really do, as a fellow and, a, and as a boxing man. You know, there is no magic boxing trainer. I just think there's the right trainer for the right fighter, like me and Danny. I'll be the best trainer for Danny. Not because I didn't do some magic pads or because I can do this or do that with while he's punching a bag or whatever. Because I care for him. And I've got his best interests at heart. I've never seen him get here. And I only want to see him progress and do better. So that's what it's all about for me. I'm not bothered about someone making me a million dollars in the pads. I just, want to make, I just want to have my best interest at heart and, and I know for a fact James does that for all his other fighters and do that for me. We'll come on to Danny in a, in a little while as well but just to stick with obviously um, yeah. when you link up. How excited are you then for, for this kind of new lease of life and what I assume will be from your past interviews your, your last crack at boxing before you do kind of hang up your gloves? Well, obviously I've got the MTK Global move as well. Um, that really, I've been managing myself probably for four years now after the white fight. Stressful at times. Probably not got paid as much as I could have at times. Because when Eddie goes, you want to fight him? Yeah. This is what you're getting paid. All right, Sam, nice. Really. Thanks for having me on the show. You know what I mean? And only, oh, you know, when I realised, I only realised my worth when I got offered the money for the wild by Frank Warren. Only then, the, when Eddie said, no, well, this is what you should be getting paid. I thought, well, why the fuck can't you be paid me that then? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, I thought, I'm going to get him from management and they can fucking sort it because, like, I'm, I'm very appreciative. Eddie's given me a career I could never have dreamed of, but I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have been managing myself, to be honest. You know, I shouldn't have been, and I have for years because I was just thinking, not even saving 10%, I just, I just wanted to be in control of it, but I think MTK are the best management group in boxing at the minute. They've got a lot of pull, a lot of influence. You know, not only have they got Eddie's shows, they've got Frank Warren, they've got Top Ram, they've got all sorts of different stuff. And this point in my career now, it's just about maximising the money I can make before I, before I retire. You know, I'm involved in a lot of things in Doncaster. You know, I've put my money into a lot of stuff. And I want to continue to do that, you know. I want to continue to give Danny a, a, a good life and a good start to his career. Liam, all the other kids that I train, all the other stuff that I'm involved in. So... You know, I don't want to make millions of pounds for myself. I just want to make enough money where I can keep doing the things that I'm doing. So, um, so yeah, I work with MTK just so they can just 
take be prof- so I can be professionally managed instead of doing it myself. I went with Jamie so I could give me the best chance of getting the best out of myself. And now it's a case of either fight behind closed doors or I wait. E- either way, either way, I'm happy. You know, depending on what happens. I've obviously spoken to Darren since obviously you guys decided not to work together again, and he said he couldn't yeah. be happier for you. He thought it was the right move for you to go and team up with Jamie, especially knowing because he was a lot closer to you to where you live. Yeah as opposed to having to travel down to London. I did ask him about, like, when we've seen you in training at times and we see you on the pads, we see some of the... You look brilliant. And then, for whatever reason, we haven't quite been able to see you be in the ring. And he said himself, yeah. he doesn't know why. He doesn't know if maybe you could end up with that reputation of being a gym fighter because we know you've had brilliant sparring with you know, Fury, AJ Klitschko, you've been around. Yeah. Is that a worry for you? Are you thinking that maybe people will start to look at you as, as a gym fighter? Do you think you are better than that? But what, why do you think it is we haven't seen what you've worked on in the gym in the ring today? Well, first of all, me and Darren Barker, like we, we stopped training together just because Darren didn't want to train anymore, you know, and I wasn't sure if I was going to box. Me and Darren are great friends, and you know what I mean? I've got a lot of love for Darren. He's one of the He's one of the real good men in boxing, like the proper good men, you know what I mean? So, but in terms of the other thing, the Lucas Brown, I look at the Lucas Brown third round, and the first two rounds, I was awful. I was getting hit with every shot he threw. He could have had his eyes shut and hit me. The third round, I came out, I took him out in 40 seconds with no fuss at all. And he's a very tough man, and he can fight a little bit. He's good, you know, he's underrated now, Lucas Brown. I took him out in 40 seconds with no problem at all with a lovely shot. And that's what I do in the gym. That's what I've done in the gym for years to, the, to some of the best fighters in the world. But whether I can't handle the occasion or whether... I, d- I don't really know, to be honest. I think lots of things like... I'm not the biggest heavyweight in the world, which is which is, which is a bit of a negative, but I can't do 14-4. There's no excuses, really. I've just not been good enough, you know? Every time I've stepped up, apart from the brown fight, I've got beat and... And that is what it is, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. It's not really a worry. I do stuff in the gym sometimes, yeah. Like, I'll spar. And, like, and Darren, after one spar, Darren said to me, he said, you can beat everybody. He said, Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury, all of them. He said, what I've just, like, <laughs> he just said, what I see in the gym, you can beat any fight in the world. And numerous people have said that to me over the years. And I get in the ring and I've never done it. But I don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. It's it's one of them. Um, it's like Ravel Morrison on the training pitch. You know the footballer they're talking yeah. about. It was fantastic. He plays for West Ham and Borough in the Championship, and he he doesn't really set the world alight, does he? You know he's competent and he's a very good player, but it doesn't mean that he can play in the Premier League or the Champions League. And I guess that's a little bit like me, and that and that's fine. I can live with it. You know I've, I've try. I always try my best, always. And whatever I've done, I've done. And um, I've got to a good level, got some good wins. I hope to get a few more good wins and I hope I can do in the ring what I do in the gym. But if I don't, I don't. It just means that, you know, I didn't, you know, like Floyd Merver always said, don't matter what you do in the gym, it's what you do in the ring. So I don't, I don't worry about it. I know just to link it back to Jamie's gym, there's a few fighters which you'll know, especially Carl Frampton. You've got a bit of a, yep. a table tennis rivalry there. We've all seen over social media in the past. Have you yeah. had a with Carl? No, I'm, I'm, my favourite boxer at the minute is Carl Frampton for the last couple of years. He's my favourite fighter. I think he's an exceptional fighter. I love watching him. I think he's a good man as well. He's a funny man. Uh, Chantal Cameron, Tommy, Tommy Coyle's in the gym, obviously retired, but in the gym. Rocky Fielding, Martin Murray, Akib Fiaz, Jack Cattrall. So much talent in the gym, you know. There's about eight fighters in the gym. And no, it'd be technical with me and Danny. I'm probably the ninth best in there, Danny Tenth. So, uh, so you know what? It'd be nice. Everywhere, I, everywhere I've been in my career in my life, I always seem to, I always seem to end up being the big fish or the big personality. I always, see, it's always like, oh, Dave, you know what I mean? Like, I always seem to take that kind of that spotlight. But I go to that gym. I know for a fact there's so many personalities in there and so much talent. I'm just have to work away and chip away in the corner, you know, just to chip away and work away, and I'm aspiring to be as good as them. I'll be a little bit shy around Carl Frampton and Martin Murray, and I will, you know, because I'll look up to him, you know, as boxers, and especially Martin Murray is a bloke as well. So, 
it's I'm I'm really looking I'm looking forward to that. I've not really been in a in a gym environment with other fighters for a long time. Probably since I trained with Peter Fury with Huey Tyson. Since then, I've always been it's always been one on one. So I am looking forward to that. I'm sure they're all looking forward to working with you as well, Dave. I've got to, I've got to speak with Jack Cadrill and Stephen Ward today. In fact, so I'll pass on um, your best wishes to them as well. No, I like Jack Cadrill. I like all of them as well. Like I don't, I know some of them a little bit, and I, and I don't know. I've not spoke to some of them at all. But I'm a massive boxing fan. You know, I remember when I first went to McMaster Gym and John Murray was in the car outside the gym. I was so nervous, I didn't even want to walk past his car. Um, obviously, I've, I've grown out of that a little bit now, but um, I'm excited to be around him. Jack Catchell, I think, you know, Catchell and Frampton are two of the best fighters, in, probably two of the best fighters in the country. It's, I'm really excited just to be in the gym as a fan as well as, as a fighter. Obviously, then, just to move away from the link up to then, and talk to me about what kind of plans did you have in place before lockdown, or discussions at least? Well, I spoke to Ed. Uh, I think I was going to box either on, on White Pivek, you know, which is already used to. I was going to be on one or the other. It was the last message I had was I'm going to get the biggest fight possible, Dave. You know, it could have been it could have been that fighting out for me, to be honest. Could have been the money I wanted for the Dubois fight. I was hoping against somebody else. Not sure it would have been against maybe like a Parker, Hergovic, something like that. You know, big job, of course. But at this point in my career. Like I'm either I'm either in a fifty fifty at the Messi level or I'm the opponent against a big big name worldwide, you know. I think that's I think that's where pretty much where I'm at. So and that's fine. That's just where I am, isn't it? That's what I've earned. That's what I've that's what I've earned, or oh, that's where I'm that's where I'm placed. So uh that was the plan. The plan now is to box behind closed doors. Um I was asked to give a list of fighters that I'd want to fight. Domestic. I gave them the names, and now I'll just wait to hear back. I either fight them or I, or I, or I told them I'll wait. Talking about that, you know, behind closed door shows, is it, is it something you're, you're very interested, you're keen on, or? I mean, I think it, I mean, I think it could work in my favour. I think it could be like a gym environment. It could be like a sparring environment. It could work in my favour, you know. Um, it's going to be hard for fighters to get sparring. It's going to be a bit of a minefield, really. It's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of excuses from a lot of fighters, you know, the ones that lose. Because I couldn't get sparring, I couldn't get training camp. So it's a bit of a knock for nothing, really. You know what I mean? Like, you can say, oh, well, I'll blame it on this, I'll blame it on that. So I hope to fight behind closed doors. I think it'll suit. Um, I gave, I've given three names that I'd like to watch behind closed doors if I get them. And the money that I think I should get for fighting them, I'll fight them. If not, I'm all right filling buckets with sand and, and stuff, you know, for the foreseeable. So we'll just have to see what happens. Can we can we get you to reveal those three names or do you have to keep them close? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, of course. They just they just said, who would you want to box domestically? So I went on BoxRec and I, I looked at, I'm number 10 on BoxRec. These aren't, they're not official ratings by no means, I don't think, but you've got Joshua Fury, White, Chisora. they top four. They're, they're all busy. Like, they're going to watch Pule, Wilder, Povetkin and use it respectively. So they and they're way out of my realms of I originally thought you were gonna say you asked for Joshua Fury and no, I I <laughs> So they're they're out of their own possibility. Then you look at Joyce Gorman Dubois, they were Frank Warren. I don't think they're gonna fight in his back garden. Then you look at David Price and Huey Fury, work with Matt Shuan and TK, I think. David definitely does. Yeah. Huey does as well. So, so I said I'll fight you with Fury and I'll fight David Price. Like for no other reason than the rated above me, the really good fights for me. I think I think the public wouldn't. I think the I think the good fights. I think we've got we've got good names all three of us. Like we had sell. I said I'll box you if you're your David Price. So the rated above me. I said you pay me the right money. I'll box I'll box the either of them two. Not for no other reason than the good fights. You know what I mean? I I like them both. David Price did a great job on me. And Yui, I used to train with. I, I love his dad. I've got all the respect in the world for his dad. I get on really well with you. He's all things. He's a lovely kid. But it, who else am I going to box? And I said, I'll probably box Nick Webb in a rematch if you want. So I like Nick Webb. Uh, and there's a bit of a, and I don't know really, because I like him. So why not? But yes, yeah, so I said, you if you're in David Price, so I can box either of them. I'll box him if you want. 
obviously you mentioned the plans there for you know Eddie's. You said Eddie's back garden there, but obviously yeah. he thought it can't propose. All he, he's got, he's working on at the minute. What are your thoughts on that? And the British Boxing Board of Controls guidelines that they've sent out. You know, you no know, spitting and what have you in the ring and amongst yeah. all. What's your thoughts on on everything? Well, I mean, if it's safe, it's safe. If if, it, if it's if it happens, it's safe. I know for a fact if it happens, it's going to be safe. So, UFC 249 went down well. Obviously, some great fights on there, which which helps, you know what I mean? But went down well. Everything, everything was safe. I think one of the fighters had tested positive, but none of the others did, and it was all, everything went well. So, if Eddie puts a show on, I know for a fact, if I box on one of his shows, even during all this, everything's going to go down perfectly well. It's going to be safe. It's all going to be above board. The guidelines are going to be followed. So, I don't have a worry in the world in, t in terms of that stuff. The boxing board as well, they're going to follow the strict guidelines. So, so yeah, I'd be more than happy to box on it cause, and I know I'd be safe. So, yeah. What do you make of, you know, Eddie said he wants to try to end with White Pavetkin in his back garden, well, I said in his back garden, in his yeah. match room's back garden, back garden and, and, and that office space. Like, what, what are your thoughts on a fight like that being behind closed doors? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, any fight behind closed doors, some of these fights, like, White Pavetkin's a fight of proper, you know, it's a fight of magnitude, isn't it? It's a big fight. It's two of the top ten fights in the world fighting without a crowd. It's uh, it's going to be strange. And then the other fights that you've got, you've Terry Arthur and Natasha Jonas. That's a big fight. You know, I'm really excited about Ward Lever Lily as well. You know, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure the other fights that are going to be on, but like if you've got a uh, Clay and Chris Congo, if that was to happen, you know, th th these are big fights for bo for a boxing fan with no crowd. I I've got another edge in that. I box at four o'clock in empty arenas. I've done it a few times. So, um, you know, it's not in, and, I, and all these other men will be the same, you know, because a lot, Dylan White will came up, he didn't come up, he wasn't an Olympian, you know what I mean? So, and and all these other fighters I've just mentioned, they'll have all fought in empty arenas at four and five o'clock as well. So, it's going to be odd, but I'm missing boxing. I want to watch boxing. And I watch 99% of the boxing from home anyway. So, you know, sure, it'd be odd without the crowd, but the UFC was a little bit odd. But it was still enjoyable. There's still some great fights, and it was good. So, uh, fighters need to box, need to get paid, they need to be active. Povetkin's 40 years old; he can't afford to sit out till next year and wait. So, you know, it's it's got to go ahead, and as long as it's safe, and if it does go ahead, it will be safe. Then, I'm happy to to participate, and I'm happy to watch. You mentioned Dubois earlier on as well. Is that a regret of yours not taking that fight? I regret. I regret not taking the money. I'm not sure if I regret. I'm not sure if I regret not fighting him. Um, you know, it's probably a bit of a race somewhere now if I did. I'm a, you know what, like, I'm getting older now, and I don't, I never, I don't, I never talk bad about anyone anymore. I never really talk bad, but I used to have a little, I used to have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of banter. I used to try and dig people out, try and what I know, try and, I don't, I can't be bothered anymore. I'm too old. I just don't want to. I'm 28, but I feel 58. So, Daniel Dubois for me is unbelievably t like an unbelievable talent. You know what I mean? I think he's fantastic. I'd box him tomorrow. He can come to he can come to me and I'll scrap him now if he wants. I'm that kind of man. But <laughs> I know how good he is. He's exceptional. Um, and if the fight got offered again for the similar money, I'd box him. Of course, I'd box him. And I gave him my very best. And I think I could give him some. I think I could give him. At least, I could at the very least give him something to think about in some very sore hands. However, I'm a, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I'd have took the fight. I wish I had that money in the bank. But at the same time, looking back on it with a sensible head, I'm glad it didn't happen because I wasn't... Um, I'm going to be honest because I'm tired this morning, so it makes me honest. I'm glad I didn't take it. I wasn't in the frame of mind for it. I wasn't in any kind of shape to take it. And I probably got put on the gun for the first time, to be honest. So I'm glad I didn't take it because some things are more important than money. And my pride and my health is one is, is two of them things. So I'm I'm kind of glad it didn't happen, to be honest. There's a lot of talk about well, not a lot of talk, but Frank Warren, you know, he's come out and said he'd like to make you know the Bois Wilder fight with you know, yeah. within a year or so if, if things were to go to plan with Daniel. 
how far off do you think Daniel is from a Wilder fight, and how do you think he would fare against the Untied Wilder? I don't. I don't think he's very far off at all. I think the Joyce fight would have really told us a lot, you know, because Joe Joyce is a really, really people really underrate Joe Joyce. He um, he's as strong as anybody I've ever been in the ring with. His fit is relentless. He's a little bit easy to hit sometimes. And with Daniel, that could have been his undoing. But it'd been interesting if they got Daniel through three, four rounds. It would have been very interesting, and we would have we would have had a better idea of what Daniel was all about. But the Warren and Wilder for me, like that's who hits who first kind of job. You know, it's interesting. You met Wilder, the favourite, of course, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have been the most surprised if, if Daniel beat if Daniel beat him. But um, I think he's a bit off that, to be honest. You know, like I said, the Joe, the Joe Joyce fight would have told us a lot. If I'm looking after Daniel, I'd be wanting to put him in with the likes of uh, myself. You know, tough men, real. I'm a grown man, I'm 28, I'm tough. I want to give some rounds, I want to give a bit to think about, you know, the likes of myself. And then, uh, you know, you, 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 Hugh Fury. Hugh Fury is exceptionally tough. Um, he's probably a little bit above British level, but, you know, them kind of fighters. You know, you can't jump. Nathan Gorman, I think, is really talented, but Nathan's not done anything to prove that is above British level. You can't go jumping from, you know, Nathan, who a talented is unproven, Fujimoto. You know, you can't just go from them guys to Wilder. It's like going from Jason Gavin to Dillian White. I've done it, <laughs> and then Luis Ortiz. I've done it. It don't work. You've got to have a little bit of a little bit of a, some middle ground. So, I'd watch it though. Daniel Dubois, for me, is one of the most exciting fighters in the world at the minute. You know, he's hitting people and they're going over. I think I think he's really good. And I, just, I hope that Joe Joyce uh, fight happens. I, I, I fancy Joe to beat him. But I think Daniel Dubois, I think I think he can go all the way still. He, even if that was the case, I think I think he's really, really, really good. And the Nathan Gorman fight showed me that's not how good Nathan is. And he made Nathan look pretty average that night. 